and welcome to Nadia's Modern Imaginings. Today I am going to be elaborating on what I did last time. In my last video you might have seen I attempted some acrylic pore paintings. This one however I did off camera using my own acrylics mixed with some PVA glue and I had great fun doing this. So much so that I thought let's take this to the next level and start pouring some wax. So I did a few little experiments off camera. The first one I attempted was using the same colours as I used for this with wax and as you can tell it didn't quite turn out how I was expecting. It's so solid and dries so quickly that um, the effects I got were not amazing. So I decided I was going to go for something a bit different and I was adding various blobs and trails and drips of wax, layering them one on top of the other to create something a bit different, a bit more funky. And this is what I did with some leftover pieces of encaustic wax that I had in my box. Um, I didn't have that much left over, so I just did a small canvas and um, got some really interesting textures and effects, but some of the colours were a little bit muddy. Um, and I'm not sure I'm totally happy with all of it, as this was just a dabble. I am now going to take a slightly larger canvas and some different wax to try a larger and more thought-through experiment. So I decided to get a big waxing pot to melt lots and lots of coloured crayons. I got these out of charity shop. A new charity shop opened in our area and they had a bunch of crayons all broken through the back. Said, would you like some? I was like, yes, I've never tried painting with crayons before. I've always used the encaustic wax that you get in sets because that is proper encaustic wax. I know people try crayons. I know it's a thing that I've wanted to experiment with before. Uh, because I've got all these beautiful rainbow colours that I cleaned, cleaned up really nicely, I thought I would melt them in this big pot and maybe make some of my own encaustic colours with some silicon moulds, which I got for the purpose. My previous attempts at pouring wax, I just used my little um, wax seal kit um, with a little tea light on a little Bunsen burner type thing and uh, the wax melts in a little pouring thing. I have got something to pour this with. Um, this does have a pouring lip inside it, I think. Let's open it up and see. This is what this looks like. It is just a very small pot. This little pot with a little knob and a little internal piece has got a little handle. That is really dinky. <laughs> and a little piece to rest your paintbrush on. That is good as well. It's a tiny bit smaller than I thought, but I don't need anything huge. And it's got a lid where you can see through it because it's see-through. And I don't think I'm going to be able to pour it like that, but I am set for that. I'm organized for that. Because when I was in the charity shop, I also found this really dinky little souvenir miniature copper pan. It says um, Campbelltown on it, so it's a, obviously a little souvenir type thing, but because it's metal it will conduct the heat and I'll be able to just dip and pour. Fingers crossed. We'll see how this goes. I'm looking forward to this. Let's go. Right, I've got a nice A4 canvas. I'm probably going to do it landscape and it's going to be a uh, a semi-abstract or total abstract piece. I'm going to just tip each of these colours into the pot, put the lid on, wait for it to melt and then take my little boom and pour the wax. Let's go! Right, 
Oh ja, medium. Here we go. And I'm going from darkest to lightest. There are lots of different tones of green in here, but I'm not sure whether I want to melt them all as one or separate them a little bit more. And I still haven't decided. So um, maybe I'll put the, the darker ones in first, just on their own, and see what happens. Maybe I should break. Oh, that's satisfying. Oh my god, look how fast they're melting. <laughs> oh yeah. Hmm. Put the lid on and leave that for a moment. Oh my god, this is on a medium heat and look how fast that is melting. Pull the crayon on there that I didn't even break in half. It's nearly totally dissolved. Let's see, it's been a little while. I've segregated some of these colors a little bit more as you can see the three colors of blue two different three different colors of green the most different colors of red because this is almost brown but it's still red because the crayons on the outside did say red on them i've got two different yellows although they are so close they're almost identical let's see how this is getting along they are very nearly melted um, so I'm just going to give it a few more minutes and then I'm going to start some pouring. There we go, this is just about totally melted. I have got my little tiny wax seal scoop and I've got my funny thing I found in the charity shop. Let's see which one works better. Um, I'm probably wanting a larger area to try and cover this first. Ooh, that's very funny. I love this dotting effect actually. Oh, that's very cool. That's one of, one of the things I really liked on the little ones I did. Let's try the small scoop, see if I can get some finer detail. I've got some quite good techniques and what I've got left in here I'm going to pour into the silicone mold. I think what I'm going to do this time is put it at a slightly higher heat for this um, first attempt here. I don't think I let it melt fully before I poured it um, so I'm gonna put it on a slightly higher heat and make sure it's totally melted before I start doing any more of this. Right, it's been a little while. We're nearly there with this colour of wax. I gave it a little stir just to see that it's all melted. Now, I don't know the consistency of these crayons, as in how much pigment there is to wax. And I was assuming there was going to be a lot less pigment, but <clears throat> there seems to be quite a lot of pigment. And it's very brittle wax. The one block I've made is very, very brittle. And I'm thinking that because they're crayons, they're not pouring as well as the previous things I made um, using the encaustic wax. So one thing I did do with the other ones was to add a little bit of clear wax just to aid in the pouring process. So I'm just going to break up a couple of tea lights and add them in as well and see if I can get a bit more of a fluid consistency. There's also a lot of this white bloom going on and I don't know if that's just the age of the crayons. I don't think wax goes off but it smells a bit weird. You can see already with the end I was using to stir it, that's a lot more liquid coming away for longer. That's been a few minutes. So hopefully this is gonna pour 
more fluidly pretty much dissolved. There we go. Oh, this lovely splashes. All right, I think it's time for a different color. I'm not going to do the next green. I think I'll do one of the blues next, or maybe even a red. Let's try this nice brown red, and then maybe a blue afterwards. A lot less of this, so I'm using a smaller scoop. I can actually do a light. What's next? I think it has to be yellow and I think I'm going to put both of these together and make a really big pot of yellow because they're so close to each other. Right, so I've decided I've got more control when I use this. This is just about melted. I'm just going to stir it a wee bit, give it a helping hand. There is a lot of wax in this pot. And it's very runny because I've added two deep lights. Hopefully adding a bit too much of this yellow. It's very vibrant. <laughs> However the mould's coming along. That is almost perfect. That unfortunately has had a bit of a bloom going on. I'm going to pop it out in a minute. I'm just going to tip this. No, it doesn't have any more lumps in it. Oh, it's a green in it. Oh well. <coughs> That's a lot of wax. <laughs> Alright. So satisfying. What happened to this poor thing? It's got this weird bloom going on. This red one? It's exactly the same amount of additional tea light and it hasn't got any bloom going on at all. Maybe because there's more wax in here. But the yellow one, even though it hasn't solidified yet, looks fine. Apart from a few lots of green in there. We have to remove this. If you're enjoying this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. It will be much appreciated. Oh. 
<laughs> Would you look at that? Oh! Wow. It's perfectly fine on this side. That's so weird. It's like all the excess wax sort of went up to the top. You need to get it. Right, next colour I'm going to do is going to have to be blue, isn't it? These are lighter. This is very much lighter than the others, but I'm just going to add it into these ones because there's some really dark ones there as well. And this means I'll have more. Okay, so I forgot to film this. It didn't press play. Ah, oh, but look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Now I've got all this wax here and I'm going to pour it into a block. I did go a little bit overboard with the red, but it doesn't matter because it's blood red. Three, two, one. There we go, mix a bit of blue in there, but never mind. Okay, I've got a few colours left. I've got this dark blue and I've got this dark green. I've already got green blocks here. I'm just gonna maybe melt these two together and see what happens. So all going well, this colour is looking very nice and bluey green. Um, I would say pale, yellow, green. And so that because I've got all these very primary colours on here, I am going to add this to the painting just to maybe lift it up from this art attack type thing I've got going on here. And um, that should be the final pour and then I'll have another block of wax. has turned out a little darker than I was planning. I totally forgot. I rather got distracted by making these beautiful little coloured wax blocks that I was supposed to be going from dark to light. And if I'd even just stopped at the red, I think it would have been all right. But because I put this dark green over the top, I'm less happy with this now. I think that, however, there might be one way that I could salvage this. So the way I'm going to be able to fix this, hopefully, is by adding a little bit extra wax. And I think that the one colour which will save it is the very last piece of gold wax that I own. So what we're going to do is light our little tea light and use our little some burnery thing and melt this but I'm going to take one of these larger cups this is how I made the other pour painting that I did first I'm going to take one that's fairly clean this is on top there melt this and this together The reason I use this rather than my 
Frosted Cop Light is just that it is so much quicker. It heats up really fast. Well, that's looking a lot better already. I've got little bits of silver in there as well. And I think for the final touch, I'm just going to add a little of this clear wax, which will dry white to cover up some of these white canvas pieces showing through. That should look interesting. <laughs> the main interesting thing is that you can see the colours through it. That is a really interesting effect. So I'm maybe just going to add a few more blobs over there. And it lifts it from this really dark mass of colour to something quite interesting. Right, nearly there. And I'm going to use the spoon to get some finer details, I think. I am so much happier with this piece now. I think it goes this way. And just the three dimensionality of this is now so much better than it was as well. I love how the wax is clear and smoky in places. And some of them had little bits of gold still in it. And just overall, you've got this gold vortex happening over here. It ties it so much better together and it is a much stronger piece now. So there we have it, an abstract wax piece and I've got my wax blocks which are made out of crayons. Now the final test is going to be whether or not I can paint with these and that may well be my next video. Stick around for that and thank you very much for watching. Bye!